This is the month where we're told the mystical teachings teach us the Or Atika Kadisha shines on this entire month. The light of the Ancient One. What does that mean? It means the light of days of old. These are the days where we have the opportunity to go back to ancient time, the time where we sat, where we stood in Gan Eden, face to face with the Kaddish Baruch Hu. We have an opportunity this entire month for the next few days leading until Rosh Hashanah and then further a gift onto Yom Kippur to actually return back to Gan Eden. We have an opportunity to choose to see our lives with Imuna Shlema. I think he needs to, can you tell him he's a, a very strong feedback and he should fix it. It is in this month that we have an opportunity where one tear this month is worth the tears of the entire year. One step in this month is a leap forward which we'd have to wait all year long to reach. This month is an entire et ratzon from beginning to end. What is the et ratzon? The et ratzon is to find Hashem face to face, one on one. Gilui panim shalem. There's no more mass this month. There's no barriers, there's no mass, there's no nothing. There's me and a Kaddish Baruch Hu Yamei Rachamim. What does it mean, Yamei Rachamim? Chazal teaches that if uh, in this month, Chas V'Shalom, we meet Din, we meet a Tzimtzum of the Chesed of Hashem, which is what Din is, we're in trouble. This is the month Shekulo Rachamim, Hashem shines His face on us and wants us to see the compassionate, merciful, loving Abba. From that standpoint, we're supposed to make tshuva. From that point, we're supposed to make tshuva. Hashem, you love me. And you know when I find me? I find me when I feel Hashem loving me. And when I feel myself loving Hashem back, that's when I know I've discovered who I am. That's when I know I could achieve a, a tshuva shlema. That's when I know I achieved a bit of perfection in my life. That I can stand there in Rosh Hashanah and say to Hashem, Yes, I want you to be my king one more year. I'm happy with your kingship. I want to anoint you to be king. Malchuyot and zichronot. We say on Musaf of Rosh Hashanah. We want to say to Hashem, not pay lip service. We want to say to Hashem, Hashem, I see you in every flower. I see you in every hardship. I see you in every time my husband yells at me. I see you in everything. I see you in everything and guess what? I want you to continue to be my king. I choose nobody else but you. Can we say that? Can we stand there on Rosh Hashanah and say that to Hashem? If so, then we are entering Rosh Hashanah the way that Chazal teaches we should enter. That means you've met yourself. That means you've found your true self. That means you found what's called the Yud. The Yud is the letter of the month Elul. Yud is a little dot. It's that black dot. It's the darkness in my life. It's the time where I feel everything caving in on me. Where I don't know where my end is going to be, where my beginning started. I don't know anything. I don't know what's going on in my life. But that dot is also the dot from which I can paint my life. I can choose from that dot to draw the picture of my life if I choose to not see it as darkness, but to see it as a starting point. In fact, is that black dot is compared to what's called a zera. A zera is a seedling, a seedling that is dug beneath the ground. That seedling is dug beneath the ground. And we can look at it and say, what happened to it? I put it in the ground. I keep watering it 
and I keep nurturing it and I keep nourishing it and I pull out the weeds around it and I care for it and I do whatever I can to see it grow, to watch the phases of growth occur. And you know why Hashem says we have to dig below to, to plant the seedling, you know why? Because Hashem said, if you would see what was going on underneath there, you would stop watering it. Because you would see that it disintegrated and you'd say, what's the point? What's the point of watering the seedling when it breaks down and becomes nothingness? So Hashem says, I don't want you to see what's going on underneath, uh, or underneath because you're going to only see Zera. Zera. Take the word and divide it into two. Zera. You're going to see it being bad. You're going to say, ah, this is horrible. It's a nothingness. All this work, all this, this, this Torah, everything I've done. I stood there in the, in the sun beating on my head and I've watered it. What happened? And you'll be discouraged. And Hashem says, no. I don't want you to see what's going on underneath there. Because you know what? From here sprouts a new plant, a new vegetation, something new, something great, something amazing that would never, ever, ever grow if it didn't become nothingness. That Zera. According to Hasidism, is the Ani, is the real you and you and you and you. That's the real me. That's Zera. Because when that Zera becomes nothingness, the Ani, Al Aleph Nun Yud becomes, switch the letters around, Al Aleph Yud Nun. It becomes Ayin. And when Ani, when I become I in nothingness, that's when I found who I really am. That's the only time I know who I really am. When I realize how dependent, how reliant, how vulnerable life is, and how I can't do anything without Hashem. And guess what? When I give that on me, Ledudi, when I give that nothingness, to my Dodi, to my beloved, to my love of my life, my Hashem who created me and gave me life, whom my umbilical cord is attached to 24-7. Without it, I would have no life. If I can give that over to Hashem knowing I'm nothing without you, Hashem. I deserve nothing. I'm here in debt. I deserve nothing. And everything that you give me is a gift. And I'm in debt, big time. And, and, and I know the bank is handling me to pay back my note, and I still don't have what to give you. So I come to you, Hashem, out of Rachamim, and I'm giving you my ani, I'm giving you the nothingness. I'm giving you the nothingness that you created me with. And guess what? What does Hashem do after that? Vedodi li. Hashem says, oh, you're giving me back nothingness. You recognize who you really are. You see me in your life. Guess what? Bedodili. Hashem gives me back to me in a refined, elevated, new growth pattern form. That's the gift of Elul. The gift of Elul is if I do my avoda, if I scrape off the gook, if I take away the falsity, if I take away the ego, and I remember that everything, going back to the basics, all from Hashem, everything Hashem does is tzaddik v'yashahu. Everything that Hashem does is fair and just, number two. And number three, there's something amazing that's being in store and created for me up in his warehouse. In his workshop, he has more than elves. He's got the chariots working for me, creating the ultimate me through my challenges. And my job during this month, our job is to strip away the negativity and recognize the beauty of life, the beauty of a knee, that I am nothing without my Hashem. I need you, Hashem, to continue to live. In essence, how do we get to there? From one way. There's only one pathway to get it, and that's through my Ratzon. If we don't have a Ratzon, 
if we don't want to get to know ourselves, then we won't. We'll walk away tonight and say, you know what, it was a great talk, great speakers, fabulous, stimulating, something to think about, and you walk away and you forget. But if you have a fiery, passionate desire to want to get to know your life, to want to get to achieve why you were here in the first place, why we've been coming back and back, recyclable now in RBS. Yes, yeah, sure, it's because we're all recyclable souls. We've been here before, Hashem invited us back. He said, listen, last time around you left the place a little bit messy, I've got to bring you back. And he's bringing us back and he's saying, the, the, the train is at the last stop, that's it, it's done. You've got to pay down your debt. That's why there's so many Yisurim. Hashem says, that's it. You've postponed the banknote and postponed the banknote. You have to pay down your debt. Hashem is giving us an opportunity to pay down the, the debt and we're complaining. If we only were able to go and glimpse for one moment in that workshop, the Klosenberger Rebbe Zatzal said, you know what, I'm sure there are answers to all my, all my questions, but I'd rather be down here living my life and fulfilling my tikkun with the questions than go up there and get my answers. There are answers to everything, but we want to live our life to its fullest while we still have the p'chirach of sheet to be able to choose to see Hashem through the circumstances. And so Elul brings us back to Emunah 101. I need to remember that Hashem is involved in everything, every moment, every step. I'm not alone. And I think for that, for the thousands of women that Baruch Hashem, the daily dose of Amuna has, had the honor and the merit and the schut, thank you Hashem, to touch. That is the message that carries us through life. Knowing that there's purpose, knowing Hashem loves me, not just loves me, he's nuts about me. He's crazy about us. He yearns for that aha moment. When is she gonna realize how much I love her? When is she gonna realize that I lifted up the bar because I knew she could jump higher and become an Olympic medal, gold medalist? When will she realize it? Why is she fighting me? And now during Elul, Hashem says, I'm coming out to meet you. I'm coming out to meet you where? In the field. The field, my goodness, you couldn't have chose a better place. What do we do in the field? We pick and we, we, we sow the seeds and we plow and we harvest and we're sweating with our overalls and yuck and who didn't use deodorant? Oh, it's yucky out there. And this is where Hashem is coming to meet me? Shem's coming to meet me in the field? I didn't even shower yet. I didn't even change my clothes. Give me a moment. And yes, Hashem says, that's where I want to meet you. In the field where you're dirty and you're working and you're yearning and you're showing me that you're taking the first step. You're taking the first step to come out and meet me and get to know me. That's where I want to meet you because that's the real you. I know you're not perfect. I know it. I created tshuva because of that. I know it. But just want to want. Just yearn to want to be the real you. There's a great godly you inside of you that you've never met before. And she's been yelling, please, unveil me. Show, let me show my face. And we keep shutting her down and we keep putting her down. And then we wonder why, why am I walking around not finding myself? You know why? Because there's something really strong yelling from inside, waiting to explode. There's that keter, there's that crown that we were given on Har Sinai right over here, swiveling around our head. And Hashem says, if you only go beyond yourself, if you only extend yourself a little bit, you know that all of our talents are God-given. If you know how to color nicely, if you know how to sing beautifully, if you know how to organize well, those are all gifts from Hashem. You know what belongs though to you? What belongs to you is that little extra that you do. 
to flourish and nourish that talent. You're very, you're drawn to do chesed, but you're gonna go a little bit beyond your normalcy, your tendencies, your comfort zone. And you're gonna go beyond, that's you. That's the real you. Hashem gives you the start. And he says, come on, keep going, keep going. And that's what we need to discover, that little bit, that one step, that yearning, even if all it is is just a yearning. Hashem, you know what? I don't know exactly who I am, but boy, do I want to get to know her. Can you show me her? I'm willing to go through the avoda. I'm willing to go through the messy gook. I'm willing to go in the field. And I'm looking, I'm looking to work because I want to get to know her. That's what Hashem wants from us, the yearning. Because only then can we come to Rosh Hashanah and say, Ten li chayim! What does it mean, ten li chayim? What is life? Life is not just living. Life is attachment to the giver of life. That's what life is. How can I say that I want to be attached to you, Hashem, if I don't really yearn to want to get to know you? And so our avoda leading up to Rosh Hashanah is to yearn to want to be attached to Hashem because that's what he gives us on Rosh Hashanah. You know what he really gives us? We've got it all wrong. You know what he really gives us on Rosh Hashanah? He gives us a contract of how close, how injected we will be with the drug of life. That's what he gives us on Rosh Hashanah. That's what Chaim is. Chaim is getting up in the morning and saying, wow, it's a brand new day. I'm so happy to be alive. I'm ready to lift up my sleeves and work to find the better me and make a difference in the world, to give my kids oomph and excitement to live, to tell them that they're not alone on the field when someone makes fun of them. That's what I want to attach myself to. I want to attach myself to that clarity, to the pipeline of life, so I don't get run down, so I don't lose the will to live. That's what we want on Rosh Hashanah. And that's what we work towards to get to on Rosh Hashanah. When it's Rosh Hashanah, it's too late. It's too late to ask for it. We need to prepare for it so that we can stand in front of Hashem and say, look, I've carved away the gook. This is the real me, and the real me wants the same thing as you want for me. And I want to be with you. I want to live my next year out with you. And everything that you've done in the past year, how painful it was, I realized that it was healing for me. How, what, where, I don't know. One day I'll find out. But I have a Shlema, that I know that you love me. And guess what, Hashem, I love you too. I'm ready to marry you again. My husband won't mind. I'm going to end with a little story, a true story, of what it means to find the real me. There was an elderly man, it's a true story, that made his way towards the central synagogue in Carmiel. One Friday afternoon, he met all the people congregating outside. They were getting ready to go into afternoon service. Following after that was the Shabbat service. And during the prayers, the rabbi of the synagogue got up, he spoke, and during his speech, the elderly man started looking around, very uncomfortably, very sort of uppity, uppity, looking around, and he's looking, and he's obviously looking for something. He spots a bookshelf in the back of the room, gets himself up in the middle of the rabbi's speech, finds his way to the bookshelf, looks around, finally pulls out a Talmud. Talmud Bavli, Tractate Yoma, pulls it out, opens it with enthusiasm, and starts crying as he's reading it. Finish the services, everyone, as a, as a note of course of manner, being nice and courteous to the rabbi, come over to the rub, wish him a good Shabbos, good Shabbos. This older, elderly man comes over to the rub and he says, please forgive me, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your speech. But I want you to understand that I couldn't hold myself back. You see, when I was a small child, 65 years ago in communist Russia, we hid in the corner and our teacher, boy was he a great teacher, he would teach us Torah, he would teach us Talmud. 
and all of us would cramp into the corner. And I got to tell you, I had a good head on my shoulders. I really knew how to ask the questions. And one day, I asked the Rav a question. And just as he was saying to me, Labela, Labela, what an amazing, good question that is. Just as he was ready to open up the Talmud and give me the answers, came storming in the secret police and forced us all out of the room. And as they were pulling the teacher away, the teacher yells out, Labela, Labela, your answer is in Tractate Yoma, page 42. From that day on, I never saw a Talmud. I became a senior doctor, very good actually in the medical field. And I forgot all of my previous life as a Jew. I'm not even sure what got me to come here today to shul, but obviously I had something that I needed to find. And in the middle of the speech as you were speaking, I suddenly remembered 65 years ago my question that I asked to my Rebbe. And I couldn't wait for one more moment. I had to find the tractate Yoma. I had to find the answer to my question. And when I opened it and I read the answer, what I found was not only my answer, but I found my own labeler. And so this is the time during Rosh, before Rosh Hashanah that Hashem says, I want you to find yourself. Whether it's in a sefer, or whether it's in a mida you need to break, or whether it's just to live life happy and accept Hashem's sovereignty. Whatever it is, there's a labeler, and there's an Orit, and a Sara, and a Liora, and, an, and a true self in every single one of us. And our job is to find her and present her beautifully on a pedestal before Hashem on Rosh Hashanah and say, thank you, Hashem, for creating me. I am so happy to be part of this beautiful Jewish nation. And I want to continue to live another year attached to you, the giver of life. And I pray for all of us, Bezlat Hashem, that we should be inspired to use this enormous opportunity, the coming days of Elul, and further on, the 10 days of Yom, leading to Yom Kippur, we should find ourselves, we should be encouraged to want to attach ourselves to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Baruch Hashem should inscribe us all for a Hatima, Tova, a year filled with abundance of all the Barachas that are written in the Torah for every single one of us. And we should merit to yearn for the Geula Shlema. B'mera b'rachamim, amen. I also want to make a note, there's a, a, a list over there in the back if anybody wants to sign up to receive the Daily Dose of Amuna emails and join the list of thousands of women around the world. Uh,